Well, I finally got these pieces painted and these are the big stiffeners that go on the top of the fuselage on the inside above the jump seat. So those are painted and ready to install. Unfortunately, I did not get my baggage doors painted because I need to build a jig or find some way to hold them while I paint them. I know it's dark in here with the green paint, but I have these two pieces that I just showed you installed. Of course, they're not riveted in yet. Now, one of the things I'm still wondering about is I can get my riveter to all of these rivets except this very one on the top up here because of the angle here. So I'm not sure if I can get that rivet in from the front or that one, I might have to go behind this bulkhead and pull that rivet. So here's the next order of business. I am using the Zenith four point harness, the seat, seat belt harness, and it comes with a stiffener plate that goes on the top of the fuselage. And then there's a bolt that goes down through here that will hold the seat belt. Now this bolt actually goes all the way down through that green piece that I just installed. So I have to drill a hole or match drill this hole all the way through. So when I drill that hole, it will come out of the bottom of that piece. And if we look at this page of our plans, this is the instruction manual for the seat belts. You can see over here that those plates or the hole in the middle of that plate has to be 360 millimeters from the edge. So I just found the holes here that get it closest to 360 and that's where I positioned it. Now, as I drill this hole through here, I wanna make sure the drill bit goes in straight. Like if I hold the drill bit like this, then that, that hole's gonna be crooked and the bolt's not gonna sit properly. Or if I do this or this, any way I move this, I want it to be perfectly perpendicular to the top of the airplane. So the way I'm going to do that, and it's not like I invented some great method, this is pretty much a common thing, is I'll put this in a drill press and drill a hole through both sides then I can put that on there. Where'd my drill bit go? There it is. And then uh, I'll have two guide holes through this block. So I can put this down through the block. And as long as it's in both guide holes, then the drill bit will be positioned straight. So let's get a hole drilled in there. Now, when I put this drill bit through here and it goes through both holes, it's per per perfectly perpendicular. So now once this is sitting on top of the fuselage, I can drill that hole straight through like that. Well, I'm not sure you can even see it, but here's the hole that came down. It's, I can't even see it in the viewfinder. There it is. There's the hole that came down from the bottom. So both sides are drilled. Now I will take those pieces off and open the holes to the right size for whatever bolt gets used and deburr them. And then it's ready to rivet together. Now you'll notice on the plans, this calls for an AN5 bolt. Now, of course, I always would encourage any builder to follow the plans, but building an airplane is, a, is something that where you have to think also. And here's how the seat belt comes just like this. It gives you this bolt here, which obviously is way too short. We're not going to use. And it gives you this bushing that goes inside the hole on the seat belt. So you put the bushing in there and then here's our AN5 bolt. Well, can you see that? An AN5 bolt is way too small. Here's an AN7 bolt. An AN7 bolt is what you need in that hole. All right, so now that I know I need an AN7 bolt and not an AN5, I can open up the holes in here and in here on both of those to fit an AN7 bolt. Now, before I could just go and rivet these in, I want to show you what I've been thinking about for the pedostatic lines and the wiring that needs to run through the fuselage. As you saw in the previous video, the fuel line comes out of the center tunnel here over and then it runs behind this P 
piece here and there's another piece that gets riveted on here and kind of makes this a, a box structure. And you can see the fuel line there, that fuel line goes behind here. And coming in from the wings will be the pedostatic lines, two of those, and then a wire for the nav and strobes and another wire for the, the leading edge recognition lights. Now my original thought was to bring those in the fuselage and run those down here in this channel too. Now the wires would have to split off here, go through the tunnel and forward to the switches. The pedostatic lines are going to have to go backwards through this bulkhead and then through that other bulkhead there into the back to where the AHARS unit's going to be mounted. Now the problem with that is the Super Duty is a little bit different than the cruiser. This floor right here is the bottom skin of the airplane. In the cruiser, you have the bottom skin and then there's another subfloor. So all that wiring and even the fuel lines and pedostatic and everything can be run under that subfloor. And again, like I said, for here, there's no subfloor. So all of that stuff would be exposed in there, which I really don't like. So what I'm thinking is I'd like to bring in the pedostatic lines and electrical lines and run them in this channel back, back behind the bulkhead and then the pedostatic lines can come down to the AHARs and then the electrical lines can come with the rest of the stuff coming from the back of the airplane forward in the center tunnel. And that's exactly what I've done so far on this side. You have the wire that's going to go to the nav strobe and you have the other wire that goes to the leading edge recognition light. Now, check this out. That wire comes in and it goes into this channel and it runs back here and goes behind the bulkhead. So before I installed this, I drilled a hole in the bulkhead and put a rubber grommet on the bulkhead and then the wires run through there. So with those wires neatly tucked up on the ceiling, you'll notice on this side here, the only thing that's going to be in here is the fuel line. There's no electrical lines. I don't need to drill another hole in here. I don't need to have any other lines going through there. I think it just is a, a much nicer, neater, cleaner installation. So now I need to drill some holes over here and do the same thing. Now to explain a little bit more about what I'm doing with running the wires, I have basically a wiring harness that I built. And you can see it, there's one connector here and two wires come out. One of them goes to the right wing and one of them goes to the left wing. And what I'm doing is these are the, the two wires that will run or you just saw that run in those upper channels on the top of the fuselage. So behind the bulkhead, just this part will stick out. And I'll have another wire going from here all the way up to the front of the airplane that connects to the power and the switches. Let me show you what I mean on the edumacation board. All right, I have this board just laying on the workbench because I took it off of my wall. But this is what I'm talking about. We have the left wing, right wing. We have one wire here, and this is the part of the wire that runs through that upper channel. This will stick outside the fuselage and connect to the wing. Same on this side. And you can see how they both come together into a connector. And then this will be behind the bulkhead. Then I'm going to have one more cable with the connector on it. And this one will run all the way up to the front of the airplane and connect to the switches, the ground, the circuit breakers, the power, all that kind of stuff. Now these, this wiring harness here is for the leading edge recognition lights. And you can easily get the wiring diagram from the Aero LED website. And it's shown here. And this one's a little bit more complex because it has two features. It has on and off and a, a wig wag. So this is my wiring harness for that. You can see the two cables and you can see how they come into one connector. And these two wires here actually get connected together. So I'll, I'll put a connector on there, or solder them or something like that. Uh, but you really have to pay attention to how you wire these. And it's, it's very straightforward, just follow the diagram. This really isn't meant to be a wiring video, so I'm not gonna get too much into it. But this is the wiring, or the, uh, yeah, the wiring harness that I made for that. I've already made one that's a little bit more simple for the nav and strobe lights. And it's already, actually already in the airplane. And because this is a little bit complex, I did wanna test this 
before I rivet it inside the channels in the airplane. Now what you're looking at is the lights just turned on and they're flickering a little bit, I think because everything is just connected together with alligator clips. So there's not really a great connection with everything. This wire I'm hooking up is basically turning on the switch for the wig wag. So you can see when I turn the switch on, the wig wag, when you turn the one switch, the wig wag switch off, they just uh, are on steady. And then if I would turn the other switch off, they would completely turn off. So really nice feature and it's going to look cool on the airplane. I like having them steady, but also having the option to have them wig wag. This video isn't really meant to be a wiring video. I just kind of wanted to show you the harness that I'm making because it is going to get installed in the airplane. These are the lights I'm using. They're from Aero LEDs. They are the Micro Sun landing and recognition lights. Obviously I have two of them, one for each wing. These are the actual lights right here. You can see they've got three super bright LEDs in there. They've got the heat sinks already built into them. And Zenith does make a kit to mount these in their leading edge slats. So somewhere in my parts bin over there, I have uh, the kit for these to mount them in the slats. Once I build the slats, I'll get those mounted. All the wiring is from Aero LEDs also. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about this later on. I'm, I plan on making some, some wiring videos for these. The Aero LEDs does come with the connectors you need. So that's kind of nice, everything's in there. Once you buy these, they come with the connectors. You'll just need some wire and you'll be good to go. Well, like I always say, there's a million different ways you can do things. I kind of like having the wires run through those channels just because it does hide them. And I, I won't have any wires coming down behind here and then across. I do still have the fuel line, which by the way, you can see I added this bl black plastic just to uh, protect the, the aluminum so that steel braided line doesn't vibrate on the aluminum. Um, so that's all I'll have basically in the cabin area is the, the fuel line here. All the cables and wiring from the lights and everything will come back here. Same with the flat motor, that has some wires. They'll come up here, in here, and through this center channel all the way up to the front of the airplane. And on top of the airplane, I am ready to rivet those, those big doublers to the top skin. However, I always like to wait until the last minute to rivet, just in case, for whatever reason, I need to take those off again. You can see I do have the stiffener plates ready to go for the seat belt attach points. And I did shoot some primer under there and I primed the bottom of that. So that's on both sides. So they are ready to rivet, but again, I'll wait a little bit uh, before I rivet them. All right, everybody, that finishes up what I wanted to get done today. I'm really happy I finally got those pieces painted. I got the wiring harnesses built and installed and everything now is ready to rivet together. So we're definitely moving along. Thanks for watching this update. We'll see you again on whatever the next episode is. I lost track of the numbers. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. Also give the video a thumbs up if you don't mind because it does help grow the channel.